Alrighty, welcome back in. We just talked about the Chris Del Conte Town Hall at Texas yesterday and the possible move for the SEC to a nine-game schedule. Now we are going to jump into the media deal between the college football playoff and ESPN. But before we do that, I want to remind you all that if you would like to ask a question throughout the show, we get tons throughout the show. And if you want yours to be read as soon as possible, you can use the link at the bottom of the screen, streamelements.com slash gsmcsportsnetwork dot slash tip. It is a huge help not only to us here at the network, but also to you all to hear your questions answered and make sure that I can get to them as quickly as possible. So if you'd like to submit a question, you can do it there. But let's jump right in. We have a huge blockbuster deal. The college football playoff and ESPN has agreed to a media rights extension for the college football uh, games. This will take the agreement between the uh, CFP and ESPN into 2031. So ESPN has control for quite a while. And uh, there will be, I'm sure, tons of changes uh, between now and then. So the question is, what is the playoff look like in terms of how many games is ESPN really getting out of this and also what does college football look like and what is the formatting of all of the playoff and everything around it look like and I think all of that will play a huge part in not only how this deal looks uh, you know six years from now or even five years from now um, but also it will be a huge point of uh, contention when you come to 2025 and you have to renegotiate these uh, contracts. Uh, There's a huge deal over the next two years in college football. It's going to be a 12-team playoff. That's what we know. But after that, there is a lot up in the air. Um, I talked a little bit on the first segment about all the different options being thrown around. It seems like the Big Ten is comfortably behind the idea of a 16-team playoff, uh, much like the FCS. So that would definitely be something to watch where ESPN now has a double, a triple the games possibly. Um, and, you know, they have the ability to uh, really kind of corner that market on most of the post game uh, or postseason, excuse me, of college football. When, uh, you know, you talk about college football nowadays, bowl games kind of become an afterthought because of the craziness that is December in college football. But, I think, especially with the expanded playoff, it's going to be a lot of, if you're not in the playoff, I we're not going to talk about you too much after uh, conference championship week. So it is a very interesting flip, not only to um, the structure of the playoff and the structure of college football, but it does change the way that other programs are going to get talked about around the country. You know, there are tons of very good second tier programs that um will most likely fall short of being in the 16 or the 12 team playoff but if your team's 17 you're a pretty good team but uh it might be tough for you to get uh any time on TV much uh during that December craziness that we call the college football schedule right now which is something I will absolutely get into uh in shows to come but uh I think one of the very interesting layers of all of this is ESPN, Fox, and Warner Bros. have all just decided to partner up for a possible streaming service. Now, um, ESPN and Fox are obviously the kingmakers in college football. They are the people that call the shots. They are the people that make most of the big decisions. Whether or not uh, a lot of fans know that or not, I don't know, but uh, when it really comes down to it, the media markets and the media companies are the ones that set the pace for college football in every way, pretty much. So seeing the two media markets, you know, ESPN and Fox, they are pretty much all of college football. Uh, Fox has, you know, huge ties to the Big 12 and uh, the Big 10, ESPN, ACC, SEC. So there is a ton um, that can be done with this. I think one of the things that they will absolutely look uh towards doing is not only having all college football games kind of centered into one app, one area, um, which I think college football fans would love, but also I think it does um, create a certain level of, 
I suppose it, there is this certain layer where ESPN has decided to move forward with the college football playoff, and it's interesting that they did this not, you know, a week and a half, two weeks after this announcement was made between them and Fox that they were partnering up. And I think um, it's very interesting because the college football playoff uh, probably could have made a little bit more money in this grand scheme of things if they were to partner with ESPN and Fox. So I wonder um, what's happening behind the scenes there between uh, the executives at ESPN and the executives at Fox because I'm sure uh, Fox wanted a piece of that cake and uh, they weren't able to get it. So I wonder... um, not only what does this mean for college football in a lot of ways, but what does it mean for this possible uh, partnership that they have going forward? Will Fox be a little bit uh, perturbed that ESPN did not think about them um, while making this decision? But still plenty to figure out there. But in terms of the streaming service, as of right now, it looks like there's going to be pretty much a one-stop shop for college football, which is an incredible thing. Um, for big time college football fans that like me flip around to five or six or seven different games at a time. And, uh, it makes it really hard when you have 10 different streaming services all over the place trying to figure that out. So I think it'd be a very interesting thing. I think also one thing that might be, uh, on the way, or at least this is a kind of a hopeful thing for my perspective, but one thing that could possibly be on the way is a college football red zone style um, production. And I think that would be, first of all, just incredible. Uh, it would it would require a person with maybe 18 eyes to keep track of all of the different touchdowns going on around the country. But at the end of the day, it would just be a remarkable product, I think. I think it would bring a lot more eyes to some teams that people don't watch nearly as often. Uh, I think there are really, really talented players across the country. I think we all know that, but you don't see a lot of them. I mean, a guy that just transferred to Texas A&M, Nick Scourton, who is a wildly talented edge rusher and played really, really good football while he was at Purdue, not a lot of people really knew his name until he found his way to Texas A&M, and I think That's kind of the reality of college football right now. But with this new deal, with um, not only ESPN partnering with the college football playoff and possibly having those on the streaming service, but having two of the biggest, you know, shareholders in the grand scheme of college football together and hopefully working together in harmony um, will be super important not only to the media part of all this and, and keeping everything in college football media in the same place, but also it just really helps the sport. I I think it helps the sport get to a place where you have a genuine governing body. You have a genuine, uh, a place to look where you know there is no type of um, confusion of what the rules are. There's no type of confusion between uh, relationships getting in the way, which is what it's felt like a lot with the NCAA. There has been a lot of different allegations back and forth between whether it's them in Michigan or them in Tennessee and Virginia going at it right now over NIL. Um, The NCAA has been in a lot of headlines, and they've been in a lot of headlines uh, kind of looking like the the group that's losing uh, these battles that in a lot of ways, you know, four years ago, five years ago, a decade ago, they would have easily won. So, it's obviously a changing of the guard in college football, and I think um, college football playoff, ESPN, Fox, Warner Bros, all of these people being um, affiliated in some way, being you know part of the same team, uh, at least in the grand scheme of things, is huge uh, for the enjoyment of college football fans getting to see all of the games they want, getting to see all the teams they want, and also ca- uh, casual college football fans being able to flip into a red zone type uh, deal and a, that type of broadcast and just 
see what, you know, casual fans want to see. Really cool touchdowns, really cool interceptions, that type of thing. So um, I think it's a huge help not only to both these companies and, you know, moving them forward and possibly some cross-platform promotion, but also um, just the college football landscape. I think it brings uh, a whole new level of viewer. It brings in, you know, a whole new level of people that can access this and, and, and can get into uh, college football because, let's be honest, you know, there are a lot of people that can't afford five or six different streaming services to watch all the teams they want to watch. But having all of those in one place, a one-stop shop, as long as it's not too, too expensive, I think uh, it could be a fantastic thing for the sport and a fantastic thing for fans across the sport. So very excited to see what this could possibly lead to. Um, I think the streaming service is going to be a huge help. But one of the wrinkles in all of this, um, particularly the college football playoff and ESPN uh, deal that just happened, is Washington State and Oregon State are still sitting out there uh, on the West Coast and kind of just hanging out. Um, they are technically the Pac-12, but they are the Pac-2 for the time being. And they have shown very little signs of moving anywhere. Uh, they feel fairly confident with the you know, schedules that they have going into 2024. And they really should because they're playing a lot of teams that they should beat. But also, Washington State and Oregon State are really, really fighting for their place in the college football playoff. Um, in the current format, it is six conference champions and six at-large bids, and they hypothetically could fall into that six uh, conference championships or champions that get in, but that does need to be approved by the uh, college football playoff. They do need to be able to uh, convince that to them, and you know when you only have two teams uh, to create uh, a vote for something like that, very easy to pull off, but... Uh, It'll be interesting to see how that develops into, you know, is Washington and Oregon State entirely squeezed out? Do they have to earn an at-large bid instead of having a auto bid in the 6x6 six six format? Um, but that's definitely something to watch in this whole thing because Washington State and Oregon State have kind of sat pat for a, a little bit here. They've obviously um, been fighting with the college football playoff and been doing a number of different things around but at the end of the day, they have shown very little signs of jumping ship, and I think it's very interesting. I, I think uh, that could change very, very quickly if uh, the college football playoff, you know, decides you're going to have to earn an at-large bid if you if you want to be in. I think it's very possible the second that call comes through, Oregon State and Washington are calling uh, the Big 12 commissioner, uh, Brett Yormark, excuse me, uh, they're calling him and essentially just taking the offer and moving to the Big 12 because at the very least that gives you a seat at the table. That gives you a possibility for an auto bid and um, it'll be interesting to see how all of that develops. There's tons of different things um, that will come out of this and tons of different stories obviously. Um, but for right now, the college football playoff is staying with ESPN. Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit will still be the voices calling the national championship game, which is the way I like it. Um, but would have loved to hear Gus uh, Gus Johnson and Joel Klatt go at it as well for a playoff game, but we'll have to wait a little bit for that. But we're going to take a short break here, and then we will come back, and we are going to talk about some instant impact freshmen um, that will have to be huge for their teams to make a national championship run. So we will be right back, and we'll see you after this. For the best and latest 